Jesus is Lord. And he was such a nice Jewish boy. Yeah. Jesus changed my life. And he's still in the life changing business. As Paul said, the love of Christ compels me. You know, Randy, I think most people don't realize how much darkness there is it, in it the world. It can't be just coming to church and getting pumped up with the faith. You and I are all going to have to have something of faith in us. Father. Jesus died to save sinners, and you are a sinner. The following program was filmed live at Abundant Life Assembly of God in Grand Prairie, Texas, at their monthly crosstalk service. Our culture is capable of creating new gods for every generation. Every generation will see God differently if they don't find God where he is intended to be found, where he has revealed himself. I hope you're following me. Every generation has new, perverted, depreciated views of God. But it's not the God who has called us. You know, if God were created by Congress, he'd pass out more government aid and immediately raise the tithe from 10% to 20%. If God were created by Hollywood, he'd be the love child of the two most beautiful celebrities and still climb down chimneys at Christmas to bring video games to the kids and STDs for everyone old enough for R-rated movies. If God were created by the IRS, the Bible would be 172,000 pages long and only available in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin because the IRS would keep the Bible safe in the hands of experts with legal and accounting degrees. But God wants us to have the Bible so we could know Him. If God were created by the insurance industry, Everyone would have his card, but nobody could afford the premiums, get treatment, and the deductibles would seem like purgatory. If God were created by a committee from the United Nations, he'd still be just as unrecognizable as if Congress had gotten together with Hollywood, Bollywood, and the IRS. But there wouldn't be any Jews left to raise questions. Ooh. Now, if a committee of denominational Christians had created God, he'd be just as unrecognizable, but we'd have a budget, quarterly potlucks, and war over the carpeting. <laughs> Friends, God can be known. God wants to be known, and he wants to be made known in our society. Read the Bible. God is not hiding. God is not living in Las Vegas under an alias. He wants to be known, but he wants to be known for who he is and under his terms. His character and his preferences are not negotiable. So don't fall for a failed concept of God from someone who has never met him or whose life has never been entrusted to God, where God has changed that life. That's the kind of person that you can trust to help you know God. I don't care what their degrees are. I don't care about how many letters follow their name. I don't care about who calls them doctor or reverend or pastor or sir or your majesty. If they have not surrendered their life to God, you, you really can't trust them to help you find the God who wants to be known and who will be known if you will but seek him. Help is available. We call it prayer. What if I told you that 
for the cost of a couple of cups of coffee, you can present the gospel message to hundreds of people across the island of Cuba. That type of impact is hard to find anywhere in the world. But that's exactly what's possible with the Today with God project. You see, every flash drive that we bring down gets given to a pastor who will then use it across the island in door-to-door -door evangelism, in roadside evangelism, in church ministry, in Sunday school, in seminary. One flash drive. It's incredible what God can do. By skipping a cup of coffee just a couple of times a month, you can provide one flash drive that will get used across the island with hundreds of Cubans where the gospel message is presented. All it takes is $10. Give us a call at 1-800-688-3422 or visit us online at crosstalk.org. And I am convinced that God wants to answer our prayers. We just need to pray and we need to learn to pray right. I'm going to give you some very simple biblical evidence. And I'm going to share some verses from some different versions of the scripture. They all say pretty much the same thing, but each one says it a little bit differently to me. So. I'm going to say it a little bit differently to you like I've received it, okay? From the Message Bible in John chapter 14, verses 13 to 14, Jesus said, you can count on it. From now on, whatever you request along the lines of who I am and what I am doing, I'll do it. That's how the Father will be seen for who he is in the Son. I mean it. Whatever you request in this way, I'll do. It doesn't sound like I might. It doesn't sound like maybe. It doesn't sound like I'll think about it. The New Living Testament from John chapter 15, verses 7 and 8 says... But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. I don't know if the punctuation is inspired, but there is an exclamation point after that. <laughs> when you produce much fruit, you are my disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. That's beautiful and that's terrifying. It depends on your fruitfulness. I need to read it again because it's beautiful and it's terrifying. The last part of that says, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Lord, help us be fruitful. Be glorified, Lord. 
The Living Bible says in John chapter 15, verses 16 through the first part of 18, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lovely fruit always so that no matter what you ask for from the Father, using my name, he will give it to you. I demand that you love each other. For you get enough hate from the world. I talked to a I talked to a young person today. I want to be careful how I say this because this person may see or hear this at some point. My heart was broken for this young person. So far from God, yet knowing about God. So broken. And finally, after quite a lengthy conversation, and I know this person presumed that I was going to talk about their obvious sin because this person lives in obvious sin. And I had no intention of doing that. This person knew of their obvious sin. They didn't need me to tell them. But I wanted them to know that God loves God loves, God loves, God loves. And finally, this young person said, I, I hate people. I hate people. I hate people who do. Who are rewarded in spite of doing bad things. And this person gets no reward. This person just seems to get pummeled no matter what. This person just hates other people and just couldn't stop explaining it. And it hurts so much to hear. And it hurts so much to understand because people can be so hateful. People with power can be so ugly, so mean-spirited. And people without power can be so angry. And there's so much brokenness everywhere and some people cover it up but not forever some people cover it up and not even for long God is love He says, I demand that you love each other for you get enough hate from the world. Can we hear that and receive that and quit acting hateful ourselves? This person I was talking to has been rejected by the church. And I, I can't even blame folks. But that's not God. That's not God. Jesus told us these things in the Gospel of John with, with, with a purpose, with a reason. He, he wanted his friends to know how to pray effectively and successfully. Sometimes my prayers are ineffective. Sometimes my prayers are not successful. Sometimes my life is ineffective. My life is unsuccessful. I'm not as fruitful as I want to be, and I know God wants me to be more fruitful. And I'm no worse or better than you. We're all in the same mess of a place. Amen. 
Jesus wants us to know how to pray successfully. He wanted to make sure that those friends that he left behind to tell the story would be capable of pointing people to God and that they would be equipped to achieve the results that God intended. This is God's plan. This is God's desire. This is God's purpose. We don't have to beg God to do what he already wants to do. I mean, maybe we just need to start agreeing with God. Crosstalk International and the Today with God project have been at work here in Cuba now for nearly 10 years. In that time, we've seen over 30,000 people be presented with the message of Christ through Who is Jesus Project. And over 5,000 people have given their lives to the Lord for the very first time. Nearly 50 different churches have been planted specifically because of what God is doing through this project. With that influx, we need to support the pastors and their families. We need to help bring in more leadership. And that's where you come in. We have taken on the support of 61 pastors across the island of Cuba. And we'd like to ask your help. For just $50 a month, we can continue to support these pastors. For every gift that is committed, we've got a matching grant donor who's committed to double what you give. So your $50 becomes $100, and we can then support two pastors. Give us a call at 1-800-688-3422, or visit us online at crosstalk.org. Check out the all-new IBN Television. Follow the move by tuning in as we partner with ministries like Greg Laurie and Harvest America. Serving our audience 24 hours a day, IBN broadcasts on 52 television stations around the country and on popular streaming apps like Roku, Apple TV, Android, and many others. With one purpose, to share the move of our living God with the dying world on a daily basis. IBN Television. Jesus wants to make sure that we know how to get our prayers answered so that we won't be afraid to pray. We won't be ashamed to pray. We won't pray hopelessly. We will pray hopefully. We will have an expectation because God loves us. The Message Bible, John chapter 16, verses 23 to 24 says, This is what I want you to do. Ask the Father for whatever is in keeping with the things I've revealed to you. Ask in my name according to my will, and he'll most certainly give it to you. Your joy will be a river overflowing the banks. I would to God that we were a joyful people, that our churches exuded joy because God loves us. He cares. He calls us to himself. He tells us, come and pray. Come and ask me, and I will do. It should flow from us, but we have doubt. We have fear that it didn't work last time. Didn't work the time before. It's not working now. It'll probably never work. That's just not, that's wrong. The King James Version, John chapter 16, verse 25 to 27, famously says, These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father at that day. Ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you. Because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. I want to read that from the Living Bible. It says it a little bit differently. And if you didn't hear what 
The authorized version said, maybe you'll hear what the unauthorized version says, okay? I have spoken of these matters very guardedly. But the time will come when this will not be necessary. And I will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will present your petitions over my signature. And I won't need to ask the Father to grant you these requests. For the Father himself loves you dearly. Because you love me and believe that I came from the Father. I'm not going to tell you that God's writing blank checks for us, okay? It's sort of that way, but it's not that way, and I don't want anybody to misunderstand me. But I really like what that said. I want my petition to go to God with Jesus' signature on that. God's going to pay attention to his son. Are you feeling me? God's going to pay attention. When our petition goes to the Father in the name of Jesus, the heavens are opened up. We are ushered all the way into the throne of grace with a request signed by Jesus. If you believe that Jesus came from the Father, that's not a tough condition. It's not a tough condition. Do you? Do you believe Jesus is the real deal, or are you stuck with a plastic Jesus or a powerless religious replica? Now, think about what the real Jesus said. God is glorified by responding to our prayers in the name of Jesus. I want you to think about that. Do you realize that if we fail to pray, we rob God of the glory that he deserves and he desires? I don't want to do that. We should pray properly. In the name of Jesus, not because it's a formula or some, you know, magic code words, but because Jesus has the authority. And we come to God and go into the world as his ambassadors. God wants us to go in power, fully equipped to serve in faith. And when we go to God, we must go in faith. And we should go in the name of Jesus, bringing our request to God with the authority that Jesus promised. So we pray in the name of Jesus for our good and for his glory. When we pray, let us know that Jesus rose from the grave, ascended to the Father, and is ready, willing, and able to intercede on our behalf at this very moment when we come to him. When we go to God in the name of Jesus. Now, please don't be confused when you pray. Don't settle for a spiritual deception, a religious replica, or a plastic Jesus. The real Jesus has spoken, and he's waiting for you to come to his Father in his name. Now, I want to just tell you one other thing here, because you, you need to know this. And I need to confess this, okay? Recently, I experienced some disappointment. And it hurt. It's not my first disappointment. It won't be my last disappointment. But it was a very similar disappointment to one I have experienced several times. And I recalled that previously, that type of disappointment crossed a line, and it went to discouragement. I do not want to be discouraged. It's unhealthy, it's unwise, it's unnecessary. Disappointment is to be expected because it means I have unrealistic expectations. Or my 
unrealized expectations need to be managed better. But I remember very vividly slipping into discouragement. And I want you to know it's a very short distance, but a deep drop from discouragement to depression. Some of you may know exactly what I'm talking about. So when I experienced this recent disappointment and I felt discouragement on the horizon and I knew it was severe enough that it could lead to depression, I want to tell you, I didn't know what to do until I knew what to do. There's only one workable defense for that kind of of an assault and it's prayer I'm here to tell you prayer works go to go to the father in the name of Jesus if you're disappointed if you have fallen from disappointment to discouragement God and we will pull you back if you have jumped the line and fell into depression don't stay there. We're going to bring you back up. Hallelujah. So, we're going to pray. I don't know what your needs are, but I know how to see God answer prayer. And I would to like to invite the pastor to come up. And let's do business with God, okay?